rip, just ad living stuff. He's like, and more, and more. And then like, then John would start like, start getting some like fart trumpets and other things. Like, you know, you just got, <laughs> it just starts layering. You've got layers of farts going on there. Hi, hey, Freddie. How's it going, man? Great to see you. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Last we spoke, it was before Peacemaker came out, and now it is out. Yep. I would love to ask, like, Vigilante was such a breakout character in an amazing ensemble. Like, what's it been like for you to see the response from the audience? Have you been seeing what the internet's been saying about Vigilante? A little bit. I'm not very good with social media, so for the most part, I I, I don't. Um, I have, but I have I have got a, a Twitter account. Um, and we've been doing uh, the hashtag peacemaker parties. And that's when I've been, I've kind of, I've seen there's a lot of lot of love for the show. And then yeah, I've seen some some vigilante love as well. It's such a, uh, it's such a fun character. And I think we mentioned this before when we talked really briefly, but like he is so much more insane than peacemaker. <laughs> um, what was that like for you coming into this show, knowing that John Cena already played a really outrageous, you know, exaggerated version of this guy, and your job was to top that. Like, what was that like for you coming into this show? Uh, a little intimidating, because also, like, I, I got to I got to see a, a cut of of the Suicide Squad because I wasn't I wasn't out yet one while filming, but they they showed me a cut and John just knocks it out of the park as he always does, and it was like, oh, that's the, yeah, he's I'm now trying to be the more <laughs> insane character. Um, but but knowing knowing that we're going into a show that is, you know, this is this is uh, Chris's journey. He's trying to figure out who he is and I'm I'm his past. I'm what he was. So, you know, it was uh, it was it was nice to be able to represent the uh, the, the horrible past. <laughs> um, I have a lot of favorite vigilante moments from this first season. I think my favorite might be when he sits down at that prison table and starts <laughs> insulting these white supremacists. Like yeah. that was so much fun and so terrifying intense. Do you have a personal favorite vigilante moment that you got to do in this first season? I don't know that there's just, I, I, I love comedy. So like we had just so many amazing moments where um, I got to, you know, to ad lib and do all these fun things. Um, I, I did like the prison scene a lot. Um, I, I knew that I had a big, uh, speech coming in and it was and when i read it on the page i just immediately just reading it i was like this is such a cool scene <laughs> um so i was very looking forward to to being able to shoot that and and see how it plays out um james wrote an incredible scene he really did um so that was that was probably one of my favorite moments for sure absolutely yeah what was the physicality of this role like and also i didn't get to ask last time i want to ask too were you fully in the suit doing the opening number dance sequence do you did you have this amazing stunt team that you were working with stunt dancers like was that you in the suit in the opening was that you throughout the season how much was it a challenge for you like physically to play this character it's a very it's it's you know it's tricky when you when they put on a mask you know there's you know as actors you know you hopefully you can try and tell most things through the eyes and then you know as you come you know as you get on on wider lenses you, you want to get more physical and so it's difficult when you could have put a mask on to then communicate with everyone and try and tell the audience what you're thinking. Um, so it's tricky. Uh, the flip in the, in the, uh, in the dance at the thing was, uh, the fantastic stunt team. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, like it was, it was, it's useful as well because, you know, I did, I did fight in the, in the prison scene and stuff, but there was definitely, uh, there were, um, a few, quite a lot of moments, especially in the end, the stunt team can just, you can put the mask on. They can do a lot of the heavy lifting with the physical stuff, which is yeah. absolute fine by me because they are <laughs> absolutely fantastic uh, and just like they—they're incredible. Yeah, um, and they will do ten thousand times better than ever than anything I could do. Well, it's it's a it's always a great collaboration between a great actor such as yourself, a great stunt team. I have to highlight in the finale too that choreography for Vigilante, that whole action sequence when you guys are running across the field taking out all these butterflies, it was pretty phenomenal. Like, what was that like for you filming that in the finale? Did you get to do any of those awesome stunts and choreography moves versus what's it like for you to see the sort of final product and to see it all kind of come together? 
that's pretty much most stunts. So that's uh, you know, it was I got to kind of be an audience member watching the, the watching that that epic scene, um, which was very fun. I you know I I I love the fact that we could have a scene where you've essentially got a Lord of the Rings style battle that is right. in an open field coming towards each other and and and, and having it out. Um, so I was I you know when I saw it for the first time I was like man this is epic I can't believe I'm part of something like this because you know I wasn't really involved for that so I. I'm such a fan of, of a bunch of superhero movies and television shows, if it wasn't obvious by my ridiculous nerdy background. But like <laughs> Tom Holland has talked about being in the Spider-Man suit that he had to basically act like a completely different human being for it to read because you do movements that are so exaggerated that if you do them without the full mask covering and the sort of costume, you look silly. But in the costume, it really reads. And watching this season of Peacemaker, it felt like, you also tapped into that when you were vigilante in the full suit. Like, were you cognizant of that? Were you aware of that? Was that something that you made sure to that, that you were like reading, you know, when you were fully covered, like you were saying with your face? It's a tricky balance. Because also I feel like, I might be wrong with Spider-Man, but I feel like I've seen on Deadpool where in CG, they, they work the eyes a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. when, they're, when, they're, when they're doing their stuff and we didn't have any of that for Vig. So um, yeah, it's, you have to, it's a, it's a physical, you just, you have to tell the story physically um, and anything you're communicating. So it was, uh, yeah, it's 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 a whole different skill set. <laughs> Freddie, did you have a favorite moment from filming the finale? Because we can talk spoilers now, we can talk about the finale. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a favorite moment? Was it the fart scene? That was insane. <laughs> fart scene was a lot. That was, I don't, <laughs> I think that was a lot of it was uh, once again, like most of the scenes, you've got James just on the God mic, just like rip, just ad libbing stuff. He's like, and more, and more. And then like, then John would start like, start getting some like fart trumpets and other things. Like, you know, you just got, it just starts layering. You've got layers of farts going on there. Um, so uh, that was a lot of fun. Honestly, just watching like just watching the finale. Steve Agee did an incredible job yeah. with his speech. Oh, the die beard speech like that got me. Um, there was so many. Oh, I, the the bringing in the Justice League. I mean, like that was epic. And then like at the time, I don't know. We kind of heard about who was going to be available to do that, and the fact that we got you know Jason Moe and we got. Um, um, Ezra Miller to come in and do that. Like, how cool. Speaking of Aquaman, that was so epic, but it was also so funny because of that season long running joke about Aquaman. Like, did you guys know that, that Momo was going to be available? So is that why James was like, all right, we need an Aquaman joke to do throughout? Or was that like, it just beautifully worked out? That, that I don't available? know. I think, I, 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 oh, I don't know. I feel like saying, don't quote me on this. Cause I feel <laughs> like uh, it was just kind of written anyway. Um, and then the fact that Jason Momoa was just like, he was down cause he's just, he was just down to do it. Um, was, and I think, I think we found out late on someone, I think someone told me late on that like, Hey, they, I, they're down to do it and they're going to film it somewhere else. And it was awesome. just such a cool moment. She was like, oh man, that just brings so much validity to it all. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. I mean, it was it was like a great little character moment for Aquaman too, to, ha to have this kind yeah. of Jason Momoa sense of humor about himself. But yeah. so funny for your show and for your characters and, and for that dynamic. You might have to plead the fifth on this one. I totally get it. Do you have any idea? Have you heard anything about what James might have in store for season two? If so, you can just be like, yep. But if not, is there <laughs> anything that you personally, Freddie, would like to see Vigilante get to do? Oh man, I, I, I uh, when we went, we went to watch the episode seven and eight, and then I, I did, I spoke to James. I said, "So, do you have any ideas?" Um, and he said, "He's like, he just said he has some." So he, he didn't. I got zero information to give you. <laughs> I was just as intrigued as you are. I was like, "What is it going to be?" But he's, you know, honestly, I don't kind, I kind of don't really mind just because I just know whatever he's going to do is going to be genius. So yeah, yeah. as long as James is at the helm, I'm, I'm good. Like he'll, he'll create something amazing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any, I mean, just as, as an actor, as, as a fan of Peacemaker, like, do you have any uh, wishes that you would like to see, whether it has to do with Vigilante or not? Is there anything that you're like, oh, I'm actually, I'm really invested in, in, uh, in Economos. I hope that he <laughs> doesn't dye <laughs> yeah. his beard. Anything that you'd like to see for season two? Um, oh God, I don't know. Um, I just, 
I just want to see all those characters interacting again. Um, and I guess just some form of an evolution, I guess, you know, it's, you don't, you know, you don't want to do the same thing. And, um, you know, there are some, some characters have their arcs. Vidge, Vidge did not, but you know, that, that's <laughs> fine. He doesn't, I don't think he was supposed to. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 it's, as I'd like to see maybe some more bromance, um, with Peacemaker and Vigilante, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think in the same way that we got an exploration for Christopher Smith's upbringing and how he sort of became the man he was, which was really tragic and really messed up. I feel like if we got any of that for Vigilante, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't matter. It's like, this guy is <laughs> so <Yeah>. far gone. <laughs> He's <laughs> just, he does feel so far gone. That's the thing. And I, I do, I, I, it was, I kind of saw it more as, as once watching the show. I didn't see it as much while filming, but I loved how, you know, they tied in Chris's brother's story. Right. And then the fact that like, Vigilante's uh, relationship feels very much like looking up to his older brother, you know, of, of Peacemaker. And so it, it, the fact that those kind of tie in really well was just, that was James. Just yeah. being brilliant. It's great. It's great. <laughs> um, do you think that Adrian, do you think he has a favorite member of the Justice League or do you think he honestly believes those rumors that, that Peacemaker was feeding him? <laughs> oh no, he, I, I 100% <laughs> believe the vigilante thinks whatever peacemaker says goes like that's that is definitely the truth which was very fun when, like i think it was a scene where, where we're all sitting down and Mern's kind of um giving us the down low and then <laughs> he's just saying the stuff about superman whatever and being able to just be like what and just 100 percent believe him it's a lot of fun vigilante was in a lot of peacemaker but he, but he wasn't in every scene did you have a favorite scene or moment when the show was finally out and you're watching it that you were like oh i love that vigilante is not even in this but i wasn't there that day but i love the scene so much just the finale i i did get really taken by um steve ag's uh the die beard speech like <laughs> like because like you know for the most like i i i love steve he cracks me up no matter what he says <laughs> um and he the whole show is making me laugh the entire time and then in episode eight for him to deliver such a poignant speech, but also funny at the same time, it was it was just such a great balance of him talking about like, you know, why would this guy do this to me? And this is really what happens to me. And then just like cutting back to Peacemaker, and he's like <laughs> guilty. Like to be able to be that funny and that heartfelt at the same time, that yeah. was like a that was a, a really a huge moment. Last question for you, Freddie. Thank you again so much for talking to me, man. This has been so great. Um, just as uh, someone who has has got to see this show come to life and see the fan response, is there anything that you would like to say to the fans that were so enthusiastic about that sh this show and so supportive and fell in love with it so much? Yeah, I just thank you so much for watching. Like honestly, like it, you know, the only reason we get to do this is because of the fans, and the fact that we've got another season two is because of the fans. I mean, even if even if James did what he did and created this incredible show if no one watched it we wouldn't be doing another season so you know i the, and like I've, I've seen from from the peacemaker parties on twitter i've seen a lot of love for the show and to all those people like thank you so much because it really means a lot and it's definitely the feels like the biggest job i've ever had um so to get all that love from everyone um really it, it's it's a really nice feeling so yes thank you to the fans <laughs> that's awesome man well uh, speaking on behalf of the fans we love you dude we love vigilante he's crazy we cannot <laughs> wait for you to come back for season two whenever that's going to happen we're so so excited about it and freddie thank you again for talking to me man this has been fantastic thank you so much it's been a pleasure